Welcome to the second installment in this five-part series on the top five mistakes that people will often make when they first start using InDesign. In this second installment, we'll be talking about color modes or color spaces. What are they and why you should be aware of them when you're using InDesign. So let's not waste any time and dive right in. So when talking about color in InDesign, it's important that I have my swatches panel open. We add color into our document through our swatches panel and it also gives us an indication of what color mode we're in just by looking at the swatches panel. Now over here on the right you can see I've got my swatches panel open and I've actually got cyan, magenta, yellow and black. These four base inks that we use when we're printing. It's really important to set your document up as a print document if you are planning on printing it. Um, alternatively, if you're just using it as a screen based document, so for web or a screen presentation, you can choose that web option which we saw in the first video and that puts it in that RGB, red, green and blue color space. So what is the difference between these two color spaces? Let's talk a little bit further about color theory. So when we're talking about color models in InDesign, we've got the first color model, CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow and black where they meet in the middle and this is what we call a subtractive color model. It's called subtractive because these four inks essentially are pigments, physical pigments that absorb light, so they subtract light. Now we use this color model whenever we're planning on printing a document. But on the right hand side we've got the RGB color model, so the red, green, blue color model and it is actually an additive color model because where those three, three colors overlap we get white light. If you could imagine having three different torches, a red, green and blue torch and shining them onto a wall, where those three colors would overlap you'd actually get pure white light. Now we use this color model for web work, for working on screen. So if we take a look at the technical side of a, um, a print document, on the left hand side here we have what's, the, what's known as the CMYK halftone dots that we use during the printing process. Basically when you send something to print, it is split into these four different inks. You can see I've got the cyan, magenta, yellow and black. And when you combine those four inks together, you get this full gamut of color at the end here on the right. So if you were to zoom in a little closer onto a printed image, you'd actually see all of these halftone dots that we can see on the right hand side here that make up the image. And essentially we get a full gamut of color based on these halftone dots. So that's why it's important when we're working on print documents to ensure that they're in the right color model so that when it comes time to print, you don't run into any issues at the printer's end and all of your colors turn out as expected. One thing to keep in mind if you're looking for more iridescent and bright colors these colors can't be achieved by the CMYK color process. Essentially these sort of colors emit light, neon colors emit light and they are RGB colors. How do you get around this? Well we do have inks called spot colors which can help out in achieving that neon effect. There are additional inks that you need to add into your document when you're working in InDesign. So let's just go back into our InDesign document and have a look now in the swatches panel and as you can see I've got my base colors at the top if I just lower this a little further and then I've also got some other colors that I've added in and these are in the CMYK color space because they've got these little CMYK colors. You'll notice this color here however is RGB and you can see the values that are there. This is because I've imported a Word document and it's brought this RGB color into my document. I would need to delete that from my document in order for it to print correctly if I'm sending it to a commercial printer. So the key takeaway from this video is to understand that if you're planning on printing the document, you need to set it up as a CMYK print based document and you also need to include all photos as CMYK images. You need to add any additional colors into the document such as the background in this document here and the colors used for the text they need to be added as CMYK colors into your swatches palette. Alternatively, if you're working in an RGB color space for web, then all of your images need to be in that red, green and blue color space and all of your swatches as in RGB need to be in RGB as well. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video tutorial.